In this next segment on the modify commands, I'm going to go over trim, extend, scale, and rotate, and maybe a couple others if I have time. Trim and extend are uh, real important commands in order to get clean corners and intersections between your objects. So uh, anyways, uh, let's just get started. So I'm going to start the command first with trim because I think it's a little bit easier to learn that way. Uh, although there are, it is possible to select objects first. So the trim command is TR and then space or enter. The natural inclination for most people after they start the command is to start selecting objects that they want to remove. And that's a little backwards compared to how AutoCAD actually expects you to do it. AutoCAD wants you to select, as you can see, the cutting edges. In other words, which lines are going to act as the scissors in this uh, group of lines. So let's say I'm trying to cut out these portions of the horizontal lines. Then these vertical lines might be my cutting edges because that's where the horizontal lines are going to be removed. So I've selected those two verticals and then I can hit enter or space to move on to the next step. And now I can select the horizontal portions that I want to cut out and you can see how the vertical lines are the cutting edges because that's where the trim is occurring in between those two vertical lines. So that's kind of the idea of how trim works is you have to have another line crossing uh, that's going to dictate where the trimmed line is trimmed back to essentially. So I'm going to hit undo and show you a different way that that could be done. So TR space, maybe I'll just select this one line now and then enter to move on to the next step. And now I can select these uh, horizontals or I could do a window across them also. So you can see how it trimmed off all those tails that were sticking out and it trimmed it back to the cutting edge that I had already selected. So that's the idea of trim. Now there's a, a couple kind of shortcut ways that a lot of people use um, and these work fine uh, as long as you use them properly. For example, I could do TR space. Now I'm just going to put a big window, a green crossing window over all those lines and then hit enter to move on to the next step again. And now you can basically just click on anything that you want to be cut out. I could trim out that and I could trim out this or this or that. And you can see how it's a fast way to trim out a lot of pieces. So it's kind of a shortcut because uh, whatever you select is going to get trimmed back to the next line that it runs into that was selected. So that's another um, an easy route to go with trim. So I'm going to undo that. There are my lines back again. And the last kind of shortcut with trim, I'll start the command one more time, TR space, is to just skip the whole cutting edges part altogether. So I'm going to hit space again. So once you get kind of fast, a lot of people do TR enter enter or TR space space to blow past that first step. And now you can select what you want to be cut out and AutoCAD is going to basically kind of make an assumption about how far. And that's really going to go until the part that you're selecting runs into some other line. That's the part that's going to be removed. So you can see how it's kind of removing the smallest possible piece up until it runs into another line. So that's another kind of shortcut way that you can use trim and it makes it fairly efficient. Now the extend command works the same way essentially. If I have a line like this and let's say I want that line to be extended out until it runs into the vertical lines. Now keep in mind I could use the grips and pull the grips over and that would work fine if I had my O snaps and polar on. That would be just as accurate but sometimes extend is easier. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to do EX for extend and then space or enter, EX. And then again, you're not selecting the line to be extended, but you're selecting the boundary edge. In other words, how far is it going to go? So it works the same way as trim. You're selecting the objects that's controlling the trim or extend, not the object to be trimmed or extend with your first selection. So EX space, select your boundary edge, space or enter to move on to the next step and then select the line to be trimmed. You have the same kind of shortcuts with extend as you do with trim. So I can do EX space and then just blow past the next step with space again. And then each time I select the line, it's gonna be trimmed or excuse me, extended until it runs into something. So keep in mind, if there's nothing for it to run into, 
when you select it, then it's not going to get extended or trimmed because there's no available crossing lines. So extend and trim both rely on objects that either cross the line to be extended or trimmed or theoretically cross if that line were to be extended to infinity. Obviously with the extend command, they're not crossing yet, but you want them to cross. So keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes it's nice to draw a temporary construction line in order to extend something. And then you can always erase that later if you need to. Now, let me give you one another reason why extend and trim is good as opposed to grips. If you have a line that's angled, now if I wanted to extend that with grips, how do I maintain the angle? Because you can see how it's easy to mess the angle up. I can't use polar or ortho because the line is at an odd angle. So then use extend or trim because the angle will be maintained. So that's an important reason that those are handy commands. Now the next uh, kind of pair that I'm going to do uh, also relate because they're similar in the process and that is scale and rotate. So let's say I want to rotate this whole group of lines. Obviously rotate is used very often when you have objects that you've brought in like let's say furniture you know and you want to rotate the bed or rotate the chair you can see how uh, that would be a very common occurrence. I'm going to select the objects first again you could start your command first if you wanted and then RO for rotate, RO, and then space or enter. And notice the command line says specify base point. Really that's kind of like the axis or the point of rotation. So if I pick an object snap, you can see how that works. Now you can see as I move my mouse that it's spinning about that point that I clicked. That's the axis point of rotation. Now, you could either click the mouse to determine the angle, which could be precise if you use your polar or your ortho. Otherwise, you could click haphazardly if you wanted, but that wouldn't be a precise angle. Or you can type in an angle. So don't forget that uh, based upon the uh, kind of coordinate compass rows that I showed earlier, that 0 is right, 90 is up, 180 is left, 270 is down. So that means that if you want to rotate in a counterclockwise direction, you'd be typing a positive angle. So if I wanted to rotate this up at 45, that would be a positive 45. If I wanted to rotate it in a clockwise direction at 45, you can type negative 45. So just keep that in mind as you're using rotate. So as soon as you determine your angle, I'm just going to use my polar. Uh, let's just go up at 90 for my polar. I can click. So now I know that's precise because I used my polar to make sure it was uh, using 90 degrees. So the scale command is similar, although it's going to make the objects or groups of ob objects larger or smaller. So SC, I'm going to select the objects first, so I'm consistent that way. SC for scale, and then space or enter. SC, Select the base point. Again, it's kind of the axis point about this uh, the scale command is going to work. Select your axis point. And then you can see as I move my mouse, the objects are getting bigger or smaller. Now, the scale command is very hard to use with the mouse. It's hard to control. As you can see, my objects are so large, they're taking over my whole screen. So usually the scale command is going to be easier to use if you type in a scale factor. So notice the command line says specify scale factor. So you can either uh, type in a number or you can use a reference, which is an op, um, basically like, let's say something is X distance and it needs to be the distance of another object Y, then you can use that object to dictate the scale. I'll get into that a little bit more later. So for now, let's just talk about what is a scale factor. It's basically like a percentage or a proportion compared to what it is now. So if I want it to be twice the size, I would type two half the size, I could type half or 0.5, three quarters the size, I could type three quarters, etc. So you get the idea. Anything larger than one would be bigger. Anything between zero and one would be smaller. So if I type, let's say 1.5, and you saw my objects get, objects get larger, that time is a little easier to see. So that is the scale command. The mirror command is also very handy. And just like it sounds, it will give you basically a mirror image of any object or group group of objects. So very commonly in building design um, and lots of other fields, you'll see objects that are symmetrical. 
uh, like a column, let's say. Maybe you draw a column in an elevation view, like a front-on view, and then uh, you want to flip that to get the other half so you don't have to redraw it. Um, you know, light fixtures, the building as a whole, or windows, or doors, there's all kinds of things that are symmetrical when you think about it. So once you have something drawn, select those objects. The mirror command is MI, MI, and then space or enter. Now, sometimes this gets tricky for some folks. If you read the command line, it says specify first point of mirror line. You kind of have to think about the line of symmetry. If it's a uh, symmetrical object like a column, that's usually uh, pretty easy because that's the center right down the middle of the column. It's not always that obvious if you're copying, let's say, a whole building or mirroring a whole building. Um, just to demonstrate, I'll select the endpoint here. Now, as I move my mouse in a straight up or down direction with polar or ortho, you can see how it's kind of offering or displaying uh, what would happen if I clicked my mouse right now. You'd see how I get the symmetrical version of what I started with. Now, I can move the mouse around before I click, and you can see... You know, if I go at a 45 degree angle, you know, I get a uh, like a mirrored and rotated version. If I go horizontally, you know, I get one that's mirrored across that horse, that symmetry line. So just kind of think of it as a line of symmetry. So I'm going to click my mouse here. Now, don't be confused if nothing happens right away because the command line has one more question. Do you want to erase the source objects? In other words, do you want to uh, make a copy or are you trying to fix something that is drawn backwards? So if you say yes, it'll remove the original. And if I say no, you'll get a copy. So I'm going to say no. Um, and you can see how I can just hit space to accept the N that's in the brackets. So now I have a new version that is flipped opposite of how I had the original. So the mirror command is very handy that way when you draw half of something and then you want to just duplicate it. Next, I'm going to go over the break command. Break command can be used a lot like trim, um, but it's sometimes nice when you want to not actually cut out a piece of something. You just want to split one object into two objects, maybe because they need to be different colors or different line weights, etc. Um, break command is BR and then space or enter. And the first question it asks is select the object. So I'm going to click on a line like that. Now, the default behavior of the break command is that the break starts at the point I just clicked. And usually that's not how I want to use it because usually you're just trying to select the line. So the option to get around that is at the command line, you can see first point. That gives you the option to reselect a different first point. So I'm going to hit F for first point because you can see how that's the capital letter in that phrase. And now I can select where I want the break to start, like at that intersection. And now it says specify a second break point. So I can either select a different point and it'll actually cut out that piece in between, or I can reselect the same point and it will split that one line into two. I'm gonna do the latter because that's usually how I use break. And you can se select the same point again. Now you can see how that one line has been broken up into two pieces. So let me do that again, BR, space, or enter, select the line. If you're just trying to split it into two, then you do F for first point, and then select where you want it to split, and then select the same point again if you're just trying to break that one object into two pieces. Otherwise, you can use break uh, very easily with two different points in order to remove a segment. Um, or there's also, if you use the, the first point option a lot, there's a, a break at icon um, in the modify section of the ribbon, which will speed up that process a little bit so you don't have to do the first point option. So break is very handy otherwise uh, when you want to break an object into pieces.